Our chairman, ministers, colleagues, distinguished guests, uh, it's great to be here on the 10th anniversary and represent Australia. In Australia, 10 years is a big deal and it's been 10 productive years. So with your indulgence, I'll just read a <coughs> short statement from our foreign minister, Senator Maurice Payne. Uh, thanks very much. So let me start by thanking the Honourable Mark Garnau and Mr Nasser Barida, the Foreign Minister of Canada and the Kingdom of Morocco respectively for their roles in virtually co-chairing this 11th ministerial plenary meeting of the Global Counterterrorism Forum. September 11th changed the world and galvanised the international community into greater collective action to fight terrorism. Two decades later, terrorism remains one of the foremost threats to international peace and security. Australia is opposed to terrorism and violent extremism in all its manifestations. Recent events in Afghanistan remind us of the need to address the challenges posed by terrorism and the proliferation of violent extremism around our world. I acknowledge the Afghan people and the long-standing suffering caused by terrorism, which uniquely and profoundly affects women and girls. We join our security and coalition partners in holding the Taliban to its repeated undertakings not to allow or support terrorist bases in Afghanistan. We know that Al-Qaeda and Islamic State are expanding their supporter base across Africa, causing displacement and devastation. And the influence of ideologically motivated violent extremism continues to grow, fueled by social economic grievances, misinformation and conspiracy theories. In a globalised inter interdependent world, our multilateral partnerships have proven critical to achieving Australia's security and counter-terrorism ter objectives. Developed over many years, three key uh, lessons underpin Australia's approach to counter-terrorism in the future. One, the threat is persistent and dynamic. It is never static. Two, the world is rapidly changing and the threat changes with it. We need to understand and effectively adapt to those changes. And three, the recurring root causes of terrorism and violent extremism, extremism can be better understood, identified, mitigated, and reduced through effective complementary and collaborative efforts. Therefore, our partnerships with foreign governments and inter international institutions are vital. They must be sustained and deepened. The GCTF is a key player in this and remains a key platform to share and develop good practice, expertise and tools to counter terrorism and violent extremism. Our enduring partnership with Indonesia has seen us co-chair successive working groups since 2011, including our current role as co-chairs of the Countering Violent Extremist Working Group. The working group has continued to develop best practice guidance on fighting extremism, including the role of gender, strengthening whole of society cooperation, preventing terrorist misuse of the internet, and under US leadership, addressing emerging forms of racially or ethnically motivated violent extremism. Today, we officially launched the implementation phase of our work to strengthen cooperation between national and local level actors in partnership with the Strong Cities Network. And we are working with a diverse range of governments and experts to develop a gender and PCVE policy toolkit. We look forward to sharing the toolkit with you in coming months. I also want to acknowledge the achievements of the GCTF over its first decade and commend the strategic vision for the next decade. It is more important than ever that we continue to closer, closely work together on counterterrorism. The threats we face are diverse, persistent, dynamic, dangerous, and globally connected. They require a sustained and relentless collective response. Australia will do its part. And I call on the GCTF to continue its leadership on countering the enduring threat posed by terrorism and violent extremism. 
happy birthday to the GCTF. Thank you.